okay, I don't know if you guys noticed, but that was my first time behind the wheel of an F90 M5. I was way too excited to think. Clearly, I don't know if you guys know, like I literally left and right, beep, 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 had to blur out, uh, let me turn this car off. Had to blur out some, some explicit words in there because I, I was just like totally mind boggled by just the fact of me being in that car considering it's my dream car. Now, after I calmed down, I went home and I reviewed the footage to edit and a couple thoughts came to mind. For $113,000, you get a car that's not exactly as like obnoxious and like violent as the E63 AMG, you know, with the loud exhaust and the engine noise and just the abruptness. You know, you don't get a car as luxurious as the E63 AMG. And while that BMW was up to date with the technology and everything, it didn't have that, you know, I guess craftsmanship of the uh, Mercedes counterpart. And you don't get a car as engaging with the all-wheel drive as the Audi RS7 or its Quattro variants. However, what you do get, you get a, a modest blend of them all. Uh, the M5 never really shines in any of those categories, I would say. It does pretty good with mixing them all in. Having around 600 horsepower, crank or wheel, that's debatable, and a rear wheel drive option, the car still feels a bit docile. I launched it in an all wheel drive mode, obviously it hooked, and then I launched it in rear wheel drive mode. You can pretty much throw that car around in the rear wheel drive mode, all wheel drive mode, and it just seemed to take whatever you wanted to give to it. It really didn't snap back or have that, have that bite as like you said, like a CTSV or something like that. I was looking for that pure rawness, and I feel like while it was extremely satisfactory, like my 435, despite having 200 more horsepower, the M5 didn't really seem as abrupt and ready to just kick me like I expected it to. Even the Drag Race GoPro clips, which I'll insert um, somewhere, You'll notice that you really can't hear the engine noise from the front. And you can hear the exhaust from the back, obviously, but you can't really hear any noises from the front. It just seems like it's like almost like a Tesla. Like it's very quiet and just very put together. For the interior, on par with the AMGs and the RS competition, BMW designed that interior remarkably. Between the beautiful leather seats and and enough glossy touch buttons to make you feel like you're piloting a golf stream. While the interior closely resembles its predecessor, you'll notice that they've updated the front end a lot, made it a little bit sharper, extended the uh, grills out a little bit, stretched them, and stretched the headlights a little bit around. The grill and the headlights connect each other now, like the F30 and the F32 uh, 4 Series, 3 Series combination. With the rear trunk a little less round now, you have more like a plateau style trunk lid. I don't know, I'll cue in the video right here so you can see it. And in my opinion, it actually looks better than the E63 the e AMG and the RS7. The RS7 has more of an outdated look, I would say. I don't really think the little LCI touches, or I guess you'd say refinements, kind of set it, set, set it to a side from the older ones. With that being said, it's a beautiful car. The RS7 is very beautiful. The E63 is beautiful too, in my opinion, but I think is the most aggressive, I would say the M5, a very close second that RS7. And with performance specs like these right here, 600 horsepower, you'll you'll blow away your competition. You get on the highway, you know, you put the foot down, it drops maybe two or three gears, and it just slingshots. It slingshots, you blow, you're you blowing past everybody while listening to classical music and sipping tea, and even having to massage seats. Like, that's, that's mind-boggling. What I guess I'm trying to translate to you guys is that that M5 for $113,000, it's all a car that you would ever want. However, it's not all the BMW you would ever want. With that being said, would I buy the M5? Yes, I would. All right, guys, I hope you guys like that. I'm um, trying up a little new style. It's kind of the thoughts. I didn't want you guys to just go in there thinking, oh my God, the new M5 is just completely balls out. There's nothing wrong with it. It does have its shortcomings, in my opinion, uh, just like all cars do. And uh, yeah, just stick around, stay tuned, subscribe. Little update on my 4 Series, I would say. Sitting in the 5 Series, the interior is just remarkable. The interior is, you can't explain how nice that thing is. 
With that being said, I picked up a little styling cues and I think I'm gonna try to implement some of them into my four series. Now, stay tuned because it's not exactly parts that you can get in a four series plug and play, but I might do a little bit of custom work and I want you guys to stay along for the ride, you know, and I, I think you'll enjoy it, I really do. All right, guys. Thank you, Mike from Soul Speed. Hope you know my name already. Like, comment, subscribe. I hope you guys liked this video. Hope it wasn't too long for you guys. How right, you guys take out? You guys take out. You guys peace out, all right?